Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Steve Bedagliaco. And... Angelotti. How are we doing, guys? Grand. He looks a little sleepy. Yeah, you look sleepy, all right? Sleepy? Sleepy? You want some I feel under attack. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Ca- cafe, I'm okay. Cafe Thank cafe you. Lesh? No, I'm good. <laughs> Shot <of quiver> gold? <laughs> no, that's fine. But thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's questioning your stamina. I did. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I You're assure you all, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, let's cut right to business. Really? We are here with an. Epic movie that's well known, super well regarded. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of us had seen it before, right? No, this was my first time. No, same. I, I picked a random thing that I thought would be different and interesting. Uh, you picked Gandhi. <laughs> Talking Gandhi. about Gandhi, yeah. Gandhi, Gandhi. That's the English. Yes, that's Gandhi. how the English say it. Gandhi. Which I've been saying it like exclusively for the past week. <laughs> <laughs> what did what did you guys think? First impressions. Um. I mean, it, in reality, it's the story of India's weird ex-boyfriend who every time he doesn't get his way threatens to kill himself, right? <laughs> 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 wow. It's a very good uh, put a nutshell kind of So I did, there. I did a little research on Gandhi after this, and he's way more of a madman. He's than- a maniac. Yeah. He's he's crazy. Like he has like this aura built up, but like I saw they and they I feel like they tried to kind of include this in the movie and they didn't go all the way. Someone asked him what he thought the Jews should do in the Holocaust. Die. He said every Jew should basically yes. like kill themselves. He also said that the British and all and the French, everyone like needs to just die. Everyone needs to just kill yeah. themselves. Because they'll that's how they win. That's how they fight. win. You can't right. fight back. Yes, he's yeah. nonviolent. Pays it's on. like he's a fanatic. He's a maniac, fanatical guy, and it worked out. And um, it could all. And I was thinking about this. His position can only work against Western, against a nice Western nice liberal a- power. Enemy, yeah. yes. Like, <laughs> like, um, like, imagine trying to do this shit in like China yeah. or Iran oh, or Nazi dead. Germany. It's you're like dead. they don't give a shit. Right. Like, it only works against the the Christian the civilized world. Christian liberal West. Yeah. Yes, where, who's guilty about what they're doing anyway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> where there's a media that's even going to report on it. Because right. even if there would be sympathetic people in there, mm-hmm. those state-run medias would never report on it. Right. Yeah. It's what he a, did. T- a true totalitarian place would have shot him day one, <laughs> and that'd be the end of it. Yep. Um, they would have shot him. I'm not saying the that's the right move, no, obviously. But that's just what would have happened. He was, but they what he did was absolutely, truly amazing. I'm not trying to take no, anything. No, it can only him. work against, against a nicer enemy, against who yes. he was against. Yes. A civilized enemy. Yes. You know? <laughs> they would have, any other place would have shot him on the train. Right. They'd have like, get off the train. He'd be like, no. Bull. Do you think that shit would have worked in America at that time? Like, let's say there what was is, a. What is he trying to achieve? Uh, in no, America? not Gandhi. Let's say there I was. Mean, look at Martin Luther King. I was about no, to no. Say, well, that's 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 him. that's twenty years later. I'm mm-hmm. talking more. Um, let's let's say like a Native American late 1800s, early 1900s. No. Like sitting bull. If he tries no. this, that's interesting. No, you're dead. You're gonna, you're I don't. I don't know that. about that. That's what I'm wondering. I think you may... You'll get well, a lot more sympathy. Here, here's, here's the real power of what Gandhi did, right? It's He was able to turn off the colony like that. He says one day, everybody's going on strike, and they did it. Well, he has numbers. Yeah. yeah. In America... In America... The tribes are split the tri- up. Like if, the, if, the, if the tribe's like, well, we're not going to talk to you today, America... Nobody gives a shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no power. Technically, right. if It would have to be if the Native Americans were controlling all the white people. Because they're the... Well, they're, if they got something from them. Well, I'm saying they would, it would... It's the minority controlling the majority of this place. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The, yeah, that dynamic's completely flipped in, in, in America. States. That's why it wouldn't work. Yeah. Because there's so many... The, the Native American tribes, there's so many of them, and they're all warring with each other as well. Mm-hmm. Whereas in India... Technically, it's two tribes. You have the Hindus and you got the Muslims. Yeah, and you have this weird, small third Christian Christian Who tribe. Happen to be in charge or in charge. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it would have worked at all. But but it is impressive. What I found interesting uh, about this was growing up, uh, th- we, as as most listeners know, most reviewers have heard us say this. We grew up in New York City, and it's a very very liberal place. 
And in my classrooms growing up, I don't know if you guys had the same experience, but you always had a few people that were pictured in your classroom. You'd have MLK, you'd have like Rosa Parks, you'd have like the like quote Amelia posters, Earhart, right? Quote posters. And you'd always have Gandhi. There would all, I've always I've seen the Gandhi you poster. An eye for an eye makes the whole world yes. blind. I'm sure you've seen yeah. that in a poster in a classroom in New York City at oh, some point in your life. Quote. Oh, that's a famous quote. Is that him? Yeah. Yes. He, oh. sa- he says it in the movie. It's from the Bible. Oh. Though. Yeah, I don't think that's him. It's not. It's from no? the Bible, but he he coined the term very much. I, I believe it's from the Bible. I could be wrong. I always. I don't think it's from the Bible either. I think that's like it's just a saying. It's like modern parlance. I, well, he has a laptop. He'll look it up. It's yeah, it. No, that's a that. It is a Gandhi quote. Yeah, that's uh, frequently attributed to Gandhi. Okay, so it's a brilliant line. Yeah. yeah, but I I would always see those quotes and all those people that it I would, enraged Steve. It enraged me. <laughs> To the point where I just—I hate to, nonviolence. <laughs> I had to express my my critique by being violent. No, I, I I would always know about most of the people that I would see in those quotes. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I knew the MLK story. I knew Amelia. Well, Earhart you're, story, they're Americans. But I never knew the Gandhi story. I never never really knew. Well, it. that's the thing. In America, we know the bare bones about it, right? You know, yeah. if it, I think the average American is like thinks that Gandhi told the world he wasn't going to eat until India got independence, and everybody was just like, we got to give them independence. Legit, you know? that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, what's, yeah. that's what's told it's to that. you, basically. Yeah. You know, I a, When I was a kid, I'm like, he's, he's a peaceful person. He preached no, nonviolence, went on hunger strikes, yeah. and got independence. Right. Yeah. I didn't Which, know he was I mean, that is what happens, I but it's such a... It's so much hurting, there's so much more know? going on there. Um, but that's the... If you're going just the gist of it to tell to a child right. without like a curriculum dedicated to it... Right. That's the popular story in the yeah. West. The movie probably did a ton to get people more aware. aware yeah, um, yeah. I'd never seen the movie before. Uh, it's a very good movie. I found it to be a slog to get through. At the two hour sure. mark, yeah. mm-hmm. I paused the movie and I was like, I gotta take a nap. I texted yeah, you. You got tuckered out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, I just need a nap. I, I texted you guys. I'm like, I'm almost done. Two hours in, I, I'm surprised that that mark when it hits, it's like, oh, this should end. It doesn't. I, I also need to hope you guys took notes because I watched it like a week and a half ago and I forgot like the whole thing. Yeah, I got it. my notes. Um, <laughs> we always have notes. Yeah, good. You're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> You're here for the history. You're the color guy. I, uh, yeah, since we we're kind of talking about like the the controversial bit of Gandhiness, he, yeah, he's the sainted figure. But I found in looking up stuff about him. There is a lot of people that hate his fucking guts. Well, he's also a racist. Remember when we did that game on the show? That's what they say. Yeah. The, 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 he hated a, black people. Yeah. <laughs> he was not a fan. Uh, he didn't think highly. Which is weird um, because in the in the film and in his teachings, it's always like, we have, we have to take away this idea of the untouchable. But meanwhile, it's like... But they're Indians. Yeah. But not those <laughs> untouchables. Leave them untouched. Right. You know, it's um, like, what are you talking about, man? Also, he had weird sexual beliefs. That's that's this other thing I saw. Yep. He, like, uh, supposedly was celibate at 38. From 38 on. Yes. Um, now, in the movie, he has this very loving relationship with his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw in things I looked up and they said that that was correct and true. I also saw people saying that like he and his wife hated each other and like haven't yep. looked at each I other. I saw his years. kids like I saw some of his yeah. kids hate him. He would sleep with his his niece, his niece, and like gr- great and his granddaughters naked. Yeah, he would sleep with them naked to and, challenge himself. Yeah, to not fuck them. And he would get oh, like okay. he would get <laughs> he would make hot girls strip in front of him and like strip. I think we him. watched the same thing. And they would like make they would strip tease at him to try to. Um, this have, may have very been. well be just slander, slander, maybe. But it's but something again, I saw and I felt the need. There to was bring enough. Up. There's enough credence where. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Continue. Where people are talking about this enough, where you know it's worth mentioning, mm-hmm. and there's enough accounts yeah. that are check out. But is that slander? Because if if he's like, oh, I'm gonna test myself with temptation. I'm gonna put a, a hot naked woman dancing in front of me, and he does nothing. Is well, he, what what he would do valid? is this. I mean, the niece thing is well, disturbing. Well, what, it's it's like young teen yes. girls. And like, oh. what he would do is so like so like me. So I'm a young Indian man, and aunt's a young Indi- Indian man, and we have our wives, uh-huh. and we go to like his like encampment, right? To so like I'm Gandhi, you come to my house. Yeah, to learn with you. Him and his followers have like a compound. Yes, that they live on. And yeah, they yeah. Make, and they make the they it, weave the yeah, shit. Who's the guy yeah. in L.A. the who did this shit? Uh, Marahashi is that his name? 
Oh, Marahashi? Maybe, I don't know. So, some guy in L.A. did this, like, with a sex he cult. He made an ashram? Yeah, it, it's an ashram. So, basically, what Gandhi did is he'd separate the men from their wives. You're not allowed to see them. Mm -hmm. And he would make the men's wives, like, gyrate naked for him and stuff. And the men had to be all alone. And, like, you weren't allowed to have sex. This is cult leadership. And you had to be celibate. Yeah. It was cult leadership. That's what Gandhi was kind of doing. Well, mm -hmm. the ashram, I believe... Translated as just like village or neighborhood. Ass ram. Ass ram. Ass ram. Yeah, and he also he yeah. had um he had an <laughs> affair before he met his wife with a woman named Mrs. Oliver, a uh, white woman. Yeah, he would um dip his bald head in oil, mm -hmm. yes. rub it all over her body. Right. He was known for that. Later in life, she developed a goiter. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the Mahandas. <laughs> And Gandhi slept with uh, Mrs. Oliver. That's right. And when she was an old lady, she told the story to mm -hmm. a young uh, yuppie in New York yes, that's named right. Elaine. Elaine Bennis. <laughs> Steve states <laughs> he wants to die. <laughs> How long in? How how at what point? First sentence. I was <laughs> I was waiting. The second he goes, the second he goes, I dip my head in oil, I was like, yep, here we go. <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting to do that since <laughs> two weeks now. Yeah. I rewatched that episode specifically just to oh get ready. <laughs> Thank you. So for that. So overall, <laughs> I think we all kind of agree it's good. It's a good movie. Uh, yeah. It's there, there's parts in it that I feel needed to be bigger, and they, bigger. they didn't feel as <laughs> big. I, I need them. I needed the bigger. <laughs> they they weren't as as big as I hoped. But mm -hmm. uh, example, uh, the uh, the massacres and stuff like that, they were like really disturbing and bad, but it didn't like it didn't go anywhere. That I, I felt like it should, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll get into it. Um, so yeah, let's start, let's start the movie. The movie starts cool. with his assassination. It it starts off with like a quote saying it's hard to measure well, this people is, in years. Well, it's hard uh, out here for a pimp. It's hard out here for a pimp. Mm -hmm. And I thought right off the bat, I'm like, are they telling this movie telling me like the movie's kind of bullshit right off right out the gate? Like, it's hard to measure in years and, and to tell an entire life. Oh, yes. And it's like, they're saying this is kind of bullshit. Right yeah, that was a disclaimer. It's like, we're going to leave some shit out. We're going to leave some shit out. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. They, they caught a little flack for that because, like, they're not completely accurate because they they put a lot of information into this movie already. And some yeah. people are like, it's not comprehensive enough. This movie, has it's like, it's got everything it needs to have and then some. It could have been shaved. I yeah, think. I agree. But I'm going to tell you what movie this is wants to be. Oh, okay. What it wants to be. Yes. This wants to be Lawrence of Arabia. No, it doesn't. No. Yes, it does. The opening. Sell me on it. The opening of both movies. He did, which still begins with a death. It begins with the death of the protagonist. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of the movie paints the picture of the guy's life. Right. There's various like landscape shots which are setting the mood. Not nearly to the not it's look, I'm not saying it's exactly the same, mm -hmm. but Richard Attenborough had been trying to make Gandhi since before Lawrence of Arabia. Really? And after Lawrence of Arabia came out, he still was trying to make it. Uh, he he went to David Lean to do this. David Lean wanted to. Is he it did the same director? He did Lawrence of Arabia instead. No, Richard Ar Attenborough mm -hmm. uh, did this. He wanted to play Gandhi when he was younger, and he was uh, unable to. Do you know who Richard Attenborough is? Yeah. Who is he? He's he's in Lawrence of Arabia. Is he? Is, isn't he? I don't think so. He's a he's a director and actor. You definitely know. He's Obi Wan. No. Oh, that's David. An no, actor. that's Alec Guinness. Alec, a young I, Alec, Alec Guinness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Richard Attenborough, you may know as John Hammond. Ah, right. Of course. Yes. I don't know <laughs> if it wants to be. Well, bad no expense. He spent, yeah. but he that's spent. Hard to say. He spent all that time. Setting up a, setting, a kind of biological preserve off the coast yes. of Costa Rica. 
No, but <laughs> Richard Attenborough spent so many years of his life trying to get this movie made. Uh-huh. And it's 20 years after Lawrence of Arabia. Right. And it has such a similar format. Obviously, the stories are completely different. Right. But the bones of the story where it's the guy dies at the beginning. We know he dies. Yes. Here's how he lived. Here's the sequence of events. Mm-hmm. He, like the Does guy. Goodfellas is trying to be Lawrence of Arabia. Henry Hill is not dead at the beginning. Not in the beginning, but they're burying a guy. It's kind of like, isn't that the same thing? That's you start start sequence. You, yeah, it's, you start what, at the end of a story or close to the end of the story, and then you go back to the beginning. But that's to, kind of, to that's kill, a trope, right? To kill the protagonist of the movie right away mm-hmm. and then go back. And it's the same type of And it's movie. the same type of movie. That's was, what I mean. Was uh, Lawrence of Arabia the first to do that? I can't I doubt say it. for certain. I doubt it. But I know that's like, to me, one of the most famous ones. Sure. You know, and Gandhi to me, look, it's not a direct parallel, but I feel Mm -hmm. like it wants to be certainly inspired. It's the Gandhi of the 80s, Mm -hmm. uh, the Lawrence of Arabia of the 80s. It's 20 years after. Right. It's borrowing a lot of the same tricks. It just doesn't feel as epic. It's not as epic. epic It's it's different. But there's a lot of the similar connective tissue. Mm -hmm. You know, the way our protagonist is presented, like he's above everybody else. Kind of, I you think know. that is the man, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the film, but it's also kind of what he well, was. Well, that's the same thing with T. Lawrence, what? right? They're exceptional, Both fanatical, men. weird but people are who are exceptional was he, men. Yes, was he though? Was he exceptional? Lawrence? Will, no, no, Gandhi. Gandhi. Absolutely. I and mean, especially in the, movie. the for the force of will and the discipline. I feel like he I can't of, go four hours without feeding. <laughs> I feel like he accidentally, like gained popularity like he didn't he oh wasn't i disagree seeking it i disagree he, he fell into it it feels he was just being he himself. was a guy who was wronged which happens in the well let's start with the beginning of the movie the movie mm-hmm. we'll kind of explain so the movie it's uh it's 1930s mm-hmm. in um no in, it's 1947 oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm 48 I'm I'm skipping ahead. Uh, Gandhi when he's shot, right? We don't need yeah. to talk about that right no, now. Yeah. He's he killed. The Other than they have that um, scene with his funeral, yes. Uh, yeah, and cool. I just want to say cool. this: it has nothing to do with anything. The announcer on the, the like the radio guy doing the thing without wealth, without property. Yeah. Yes, that gets used in the Rome song. We who fell in love with the sea. Look it up, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, what about this? Um, I looked it up. That funeral scene had the most extra, has the mo- rec- world record for most extras ever in a film. No shit. Wow. Supposedly, it's 300,000 people. Wow. And that is the record. Wow. Does this count as blackface? <laughs> no, oh, because I Indian. looked that up. He is Indian. He's I was going to bring that up. Kingsley is Indian? Half, half. Yes. He should have actually used his his... Real name with this Ben Kingsley, more like King Bensley He's with half, that performance. Half, huh? Which is, I think, that's why they picked Oscars. Him. Half English. This half is his Indian. first. This is his first movie. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, he had only done TV. This was his first movie. I like the traditional Indian music in the beginning. I don't know if you guys like it. Yeah, it's like cool. It. Yeah. I got to admit, I'm kind of fascinated with Indian culture. Oh yeah, you're like the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I don't want to, like, you know, like, s- get a sitar or anything, See, but, like, oh, when you start eating acid. That, that, yeah, when are you going to hang yeah. out with the yeah. Maharaji? I just, <laughs> I just find that, like, a very interesting, <laughs> like, aesthetic. It's all colorful, you oh, know? Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's just visually interesting it's, to it's, me. Yeah, a lot of good patterns, you know? Symmetry is very important in that. Mm-hmm. Do you like elephants? I do like elephants. Okay. Do you like Water for Elephants, that movie from like four years ago? I fucking love it. I have the poster in my bedroom. <laughs> I kiss Robert Pattinson before I go to bed at night, and I just rub Christoph Waltz's crotch on the poster. What was that about? I have no clue. It's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes the poster. I just love the poster. Uh, we learned that Einstein worshipped Gandhi, said there'll be the nobody like him ever again, which is, that's pretty tall to say. That was at the funeral scene? It's one of those. It's the uh, the Quotes. announcer. I think. Says oh, okay. It. Yeah. I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure I might be wrong. Yo, he was world famous when he died. You know. Yeah. As he should have been. He's an icon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then we cut to South the Africa, train. right? 
And right. Gandhi is sitting on a train alone. Yes. And he sees a black man in orderly. Yes. And Gandhi says, do you believe in hell <laughs> to this guy? <laughs> and I'm like, imagine, imagine like you're imagine a train worker and like a guy, <laughs> random dude, do you believe in hell? Be like, he's about to shoot me. <laughs> like, you, yeah, bad is gonna yeah. Happen, yeah. this porter's like, do I need you to report this man? <laughs> he's clearly insane. <laughs> I'm about to die. <laughs> Maybe that's what actually happened like you didn't catch it but the guy leans out and is just like <laughs> get him off <laughs> so it seemed like uh, he was reading the bible you know maybe i think he was yeah. yeah so a white british man is like hey you don't belong in this train oh, car you can't <laughs> sit here <laughs> but i have a first class ticket i bought it and he shows him the ticket Whoa! and he's like nope <laughs> Get out! And he tosses him off the train. And he pulls a Rosa Parks. He has a ticket. He's a lawyer. Yep. yep. Attorney. He's, he has. He was. Actually, he went to school in England. He went to school in London. Yes. Has which is not in the movie. He says it. Yeah. He yeah, says he yeah, got yeah. his boards from England. Well, how long do we need this movie to be? We don't need to right. see young Gandhi. No. no. And uh, he actually was like uh, part of like this society in London of like people that were friends of. Uh, Indians and stuff, and they threw him a party when he passed the bar and everything. But he he was like a nervous. He was assimilated. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. He dressed in the in the the uh, English yeah, styles. Nice. That whatnot. guy who threw him off the train fucked up the whole empire. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It all came down to that one shitty conductor. Yeah. Uh -huh. He just let him sit there. <laughs> just just that's that's the thing. If if you have a job to do, just never do it a hundred percent. <laughs> Always do only 80. 80 max. That's a good rule of thumb. Because you can't, just let it slide. You're generous with 80. <laughs> no, that's the max you can ever go. You know, never do 100. That guy did 100, and look what happened. All yep. of India fell into chaos. His country is just... <laughs> we lost the jewel in the empire. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> some asshole <laughs> threw this guy off a train. <laughs> Oh, oh, before I keep because I keep wanting to bring this up and I keep forgetting. Yeah. We need to talk about Civ. What? Yes, we do. The game? One of yes, Ant's favorite games. Why? All right. I so, we're gonna, you're going to find right. out. Yeah. Right, <laughs> How do you know this? Everybody knows this, I thought. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's like a well known thing. So, in the game Civilization, yeah. it's like a real time strategy game where you yeah, play, play as a country and you build it up. Four. But I'm explaining to the yeah. listeners. It's been around for decades and decades. Yes. And, and you play as a different leader. So, if you're America, you're George Washington. Right. If you're India, you're Gandhi. In the early versions of Civilization, like Civ 1, maybe Civ 2, Gandhi was the leader if you played as India. Or if you were playing another country, he would represent right. India. He still is in Civ the Civ I have. Civ he four. pops up here. He, sometimes he is, sometimes he isn't. There's always DLC where he usually pops up. Yeah. But in the early one, he's a war Maybe the, one, the first one. The game would hit a certain point where the coding like got fucked up. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what happened. So I, there's an article about it I read. So in, he, India is always the most peaceful country. His, his when you're him. It's always the most peaceful country, like as the right. AI, right? No, yeah. it's the opposite. Well, what happens is it goes all the way. Yes, because <laughs> oh. they fucked up the they fucked up the code. So it like they it tried goes from zero to nine nine nine. They tried to make the the um <laughs> the the country the most peaceful. Yeah. But when they fucked up the code, Gandhi is the most bloodthirsty <laughs> yeah. warmonger in the game. And it's but like only once it hits a certain point in the game, when like, it gets too peaceful. Like the game starts in the Stone Age and then it keeps going, going. When you yeah. get to the modern era it flips and if he makes it that far he will nuke the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah he just becomes like an aggressive bloodthirsty yeah. madman and it's like a legendary like yeah. fuck up in their code so yeah funny. and it's like a meme and they've made it like a running <laughs> gag throughout the series where gandhi's the most Ga aggressive yeah they like have like now they have like uh, achievements and stuff and it's like gandhi nukes the world is an achievement you get and, yeah <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so if you play Civ, you know what we're you talking gotta about. You got to kill Gandhi instantly, otherwise you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Something the Brits should have learned right here. <laughs> yep, they should have. All right. So, so, yes, he he. this is his, the start of his disobedience, one would say. Because he's like, well, we're he, Indian, we're in our own country, we can't walk around. Well, no, he's in South Africa. Uh, okay, yeah, he's... 
we are an old civilization. Excuse me, that's mm-hmm. what he says. We're a civil, an ancient from an ancient civilization. We should be allowed to. They're walk They're not side allowed by to side. walk with Christians. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Indians in South Africa, they have laws that pertain only to them. Like there's racial laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because the British, because the British own South Africa, they would take Indian laborers and use them for the Boer mines wars and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. He was there during the Bur- the Boer War, and he actually mm-hmm. like ran a um, ambulance uh, brigade. And stuff like that while he was over there. But yeah, he's there as a lawyer at this point. And he's I think this is after the war. You know, you can't allow people to just fall for evil law. That's like the whole premise of mm-hmm. him is if there's evil laws, you should not follow them. Well, an unjust law an should unjust not be law. followed, yes. right? It's Yeah. Well, they fucked with him and he took it personally and he made them pay for it. He he was the Jordan meme, and I took that person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, to me, and this is why I say he's not like like uh, this crazy advanced thinker and man. To me, that just seems like common sense. In fact, most of the stuff that he was doing just seems like common sense. But to you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but how who's going to disagree with you know the methods he used like when they were so effective and you know who did it hurt? But oh, how I'm many people, how That's many people great. didn't do that exactly. in all of history? He's the guy who yeah. stood up. Okay. He's the guy that made shit happen. Yeah. Oh, oh um, I'm, like I said, and you said before, I'm not taking anything away from the force of how will. How insane it is is insane. But it just seems it's like a most triumph of the, time, of the will. He's just like <laughs> using common sense. <laughs> oh wow, the Riefenstahl <laughs> quote of the day. <laughs> wow. um, well, he's now, now he <laughs> a triumph of the will, starring yeah. Mahatma Gandhi <laughs> in the outfit, obviously. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Imagine the Nuremberg rally, but they just replace it with Gandhi sitting there with all these people. (laughs) That'd be weird. I got to superimpose yeah, it you a picture Yeah, you can put that in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me that one. I can't wait to do that and get flagged. All right. Um... (laughs) <laughs> so Gandhi is giving a shitty speech that's not very inspiring. No. Everyone's just kind of looking at him. Uh, I, that's this, what I was going to say before. Like, he, young Gandhi was supposedly very shy. He was like a mm. uh, introvert guy. Yeah. Like, really didn't, when he was a kid, didn't really hang out with other kids. He would, like, just read. Um, what a loser. Yeah. <laughs> but they threw him off that train and, Throw like, Gandhi from the train. The sequel to Throw Mama <laughs> yeah. from the train. <laughs> Mahatma doesn't have any friends. <laughs> And ran <laughs> stupid poop. <laughs> Gandhi, you stupid poop. <laughs> Criss cross, I break your empire, you break my empire. <laughs> um <laughs> So he decides that, like, at this speech, that we're gonna we're gonna take a beating. We're gonna get beat up, but we're not gonna fight back. We're not gonna be violent. We're just gonna we're gonna burn our along. papers gonna that burn, they want us yeah, to walk papers, around with. Yeah. So right. they they have a a little gathering outside, and they just burn this in a right. pit, which is illegal. So the cops come to stop it, mm-hmm. right? And this, um, I felt weird about this scene because uh, maybe. Maybe, because uh, I like violence. So the cop like hits him to stop him. Yeah, he gets nightstick. And the the wife is just like, oh no! And there's like this dramatic music playing, but he's just getting like hit on the wrist at first, and a little hit on the head, and he's never getting like to the point where you think he's gonna die or even be. No, but no. you don't want to get beat with a nightstick. No, no. I, I think course. from the cop's perspective, it's like he doesn't want to do this. The co- they show the, the you know? <laughs> they show him being like, why are you making me do this? Right. Like, there's you know one. There's literally one maniac guy in the movie. Yeah, uh, and he's like the only true villain, right? Which one? The, the fucking one hitting him? no, the, the massacre. Yeah. guy. The, oh, guy. the general. Yeah. Oh, the uh, the, uh, the captain. I think. Yeah, I mm-hmm. forgot his name. Well, I, I, I should have yeah, wrote that. Good. Later. Thank God. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Everyone else. Everyone is else like, is kind of like. I don't want to do this. They're yeah. they're reasonable people. They are. They probably believe it's an unjust law, but it's just like the way things are, and they're doing their jobs and shit. They like want to get paid. They're just following orders. There's also yep. the priest guy. Well, all right. So Gandhi gets guy. Gandhi gets arrested for the first time. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. kind of the AKA for this, right? Arrest, 
released fast. So I did have a theory because all three fast. of us, all three of us, kind of texted about this, right? That when the movie, I watched it, yeah. That the movie just, or I spoke it's with cyclical. Steve about it. It's cyclical, it's cyclical yeah. and I was wondering, is that a Hindu thing? Yes. And they're doing that on purpose. Yes. I thought of that too. I think so. I've made that. And same it's like connection reincarnation. If we all thought it, it has to be something there. We all came. Up if we knew more about the Hindu religion, we probably could expound on this. But yeah, I think there's probably something there. Um, it's cyclical. It's reincarnation. Every, while right. at the same time, it is the sequence of events of the of his life. That's what know? happened. Um, yeah. So throughout the movie, he gets beaten up, arrested, fast, beaten up, arrested, fast, beaten up, arrested. Yeah. I think it happens three or four times. Yeah. And that's the whole movie. Yeah. And when I when I watched, I was texting these guys. I was like. You get ready for a bunch of repeated shit because that's, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, you were right. That's what yeah. it is. It is what it is. So, so Gandhi ends up, uh, after he gets out of jail, mm-hmm. he walks down the street with, the with, uh, uh, the priest. Yeah. The reverend. Were they, uh, you think they were fucking? I don't know. Maybe. No. I think they were just buddies. They were very close. Like awkward. Well, they're clothes. peaceful guys. Steve, what you guys, what you audience doesn't know is that uh, Steve is actually a modern Hollywood writer, <laughs> and he does not understand the concept of male friendship at all. He no. thinks it's not real. No. Any two men that enjoy each other's company whatsoever, yeah. they are having sex. Mm-hmm. Well, That's he's Steve. drawing on experience from us, right? <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's not fair to really <laughs> accuse him not fair. of anything. But wait, friendships don't do that. <laughs> not not <laughs> not healthy ones. <laughs> so so Daniel Day Lewis shows up and accosts Gandhi. And the priest on the street. That was Daniel Day-Lewis. That's Daniel Day-Lewis. Really? And I was watching like the movie, and I was like, is that fucking Daniel Day-Lewis? <laughs> Did you check the IMDb? And I paused well? it, I checked the IMDb, uh-huh. and that is no a young way. Daniel so Day-Lewis. So he was the, like, tough the street tough? The street Irish tough. Street. <laughs> tough. <laughs> the South African street tough. Yeah. He, had, uh, he did the, vo- the accent perfectly. Oh, it's Daniel Day Lewis. It's Daniel Day Lewis. Right. Wow. Surprise, Daniel Day Lewis. I did not know. I don't think anybody knew no, I that we know. were going to get him. In I was this. shocked. When you How did Ben shocked. Kingsley get this role? He, you said this is his first movie. His first movie. He had done theater and like TV stuff. Wow. And you know like he's Hans a great Gruber. actor. And when they found him, they found he's Indian. What's some of them other Ben Kingsley roles? Uh, Slevin. <laughs> Slevin. That movie Lucky was great. number Slevin. Slevin. I like that movie. Uh, I know he was on The Sopranos in that one episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as himself. He's in Iron Man 3. Mm. I uh, guess this is his biggest, huh? This is, I mean, this is what he will <laughs> Wait, always you mean be Ben Kingsley is in dumb shit after this? Some I, so if you look at his IMDb, he's in, like, garbage. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's respected as, like, an amazing actor. Do you think he should have went to Bollywood? Maybe he would have had no, a better chance. No, because he, he did real shit. He's been nominated for three Oscars. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he'll all, like, he's in Schindler's he's List. I always confuse him with Ray Fiennes. Really? Yes. Well, they're both in Schindler's they're both List. both in Schindler's List, yeah. Like, he's in... Um, Who is he? He's the, the Jewish guy in Schindler's List. He's, like, the helper. I have never, seen, never Schindler's seen Schindler's List. List. Brian has never seen Schindler's List. I've made out in Schindler's List. You did? Yeah. <laughs> and then my parents got mad at me. Well, your mailman saw. <laughs> yes. And yeah, he my went to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony was making out during Schindler's List. Right. And a more sickening display <laughs> I have never seen. <laughs> We got two Seinfeld references. That's right. <laughs> and I knew it was, I, I'm getting good. I'm getting good at, at pointing out what's Seinfeld because it always hurts a little bit because mm-hmm. it's something I don't know and it's always something extravagantly dumb. Like he was in The Love Guru. He was in The Love Oh my Guru? God. Yes. Oh, no. Do you remember when we watched The Love Guru? <laughs> Fucking great. It's one of the worst things. That's ever. one of the worst movies yeah, I've ever seen. Love The Love Guru. <laughs> Maybe if I rewatch it, I'll like it. You'll piss your pants you laughing. Think so? right. I'll trust you. Uh, I encourage all our listeners <laughs> to, love guru. to just go Hashtag watch the love, love the love guru. L L. It's very fitting. It's fitting. <laughs> he's Gandhi like. Yeah, I mean that's what they were going yeah. for, isn't it? Yeah, he's in a lot of junk, <laughs> honestly, especially later in his career. Oh, that's sad. Like Exodus, God and Kings. Did you remember that shitty movie? Oh my God! Yeah, where it was like a rip off of Clash of the Titans. Yeah, it was like a CGI shit fest. Mm-hmm. Like oh. Dragon Heart Three. He's a voice. <laughs> it's a voice. No, <laughs> that's a game, right? No, it's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah, I'm looking at his movie. It's Dragon Age. Oh, Dragon Age. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just in a lot of junk. 
you know? Well, in this he's good. Mm. But he, he does, like, early, like, the first 30 years of his career are great. Mm. And then he, I guess he was like, I just want to get paid. I could just and sit on my laurels. Yeah. 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 Well, well, this long story out. short, <laughs> this whole thing in South Africa ends with he... Gets the locals to piss. He pisses off the the authorities to a point where they repeal the unjust law. Yes, General Smut. <laughs> yes, Schmutz. S- no, Smut. General Smut. S M U T. Okay. So General Smut obviously invented pornography. Yes. <laughs> he what brought it back to uh, England from India. <laughs> Do you ever hear of uh, General Hooker? Did he? Yes, a the Civil War general. <laughs> he. You, he used to. It's smuts with an S. S. Yeah, it's smuts. S. Um, he he used to uh, use hookers as buy prostitutes stuff. for his men, and they would call them hookers. Oh, that's, that's true. Where the, that's where the word that's comes, where it comes from. from. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Strange that I learned that Do talking about Gandhi. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he, he has to be proud of that, like beyond the grave hooker, right? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, still just, known for being yeah. good to my men. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. why they love me. <laughs> I spread syphilis throughout my <laughs> barracks. It's a prostitute if you get it. It's a hooker if you give it to someone else. All right. Ah, ah. I like that. <laughs> so uh, we realize he turns the other cheek, and he's very religious. A bunch of stuff happens. In these Michael like, Douglas shows up. Wait, yeah. it's not Michael Douglas. No. It's, it's Martin Sheen. It's Martin Sheen. I always get them mixed up. Yeah, Martin Sheen's the reporter. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, from he's, the New York Times. And he's in there at one scene. Well, ne- he's, Saigon, Saigon, he's still only in Saigon. <laughs> and he wants he wants to interview the guy that starts the ashram, Gandhi. Right. Because it's like a autonomous zone, I guess? It's like the a village? weird religious pseudo culty thing. And he wants to see where people up. are like living off Basics. the grid. Uh, and they're, they're making their own shirts and stuff, and right. spinning cotton or mm-hmm. whatever the hell they're spinning. Yes. And uh, they have farms and goats, and they all have, like, small villages. And he's asking, like, what's the point of this? And everybody is on the same level. That's that's the important thing. It's the caste system, right? We're right. Still very There's much no there. servant. Nobody's better than anybody he's, else. He's everybody against the untouchables. In. Yeah. Which I, should we ex- we have to explain what the untouchables are, right? Well, this it's is... It's a caste system. This is caste ancient system, Indian yeah. caste system shit. Yeah. Where the untouchables are the lowest the of the low. Slaves, mm-hmm. basically. You'll, you'll be in shit your entire life. That's your station. And you right. can't rise up that's out of that. It. That's mm-hmm. where you belong. Like, yeah. the... The person who's lower cleaning, than feudal peasants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the person who's cleaning the toilets and taking out garbage is never going to be a blacksmith. Is never going to be a tailor. Right. Is never going to be a, a accountant mm-hmm. or anything like that. You are stuck. That is it. And he was against that. So he's like, everybody's going to do one job, and we're going to rotate it. You're mm-hmm. going to clean the bathroom. You're right. going to clean the bathroom. I'm going to clean. He the makes bathroom. his wife do it, and she's not happy about she's it. She's very angry. Very angry. <laughs> <laughs> He gets mad too. It's the only time he gets mad in the whole movie. Yep. Well, she's like yeah. questioning, like yeah. him, his what he's yeah. doing. Right. She can undermine the whole thing. Oh yeah. Of course. She has you a know? lot of power. Yeah. More power than I would say most women in that country at the time. Uh, one of the laws, like this, is very like intolerable acts shit from the British. Oh when, yeah. When they're in South Africa, like the they can't get married if you're Indian unless you're Christian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like Doesn't the count. acts themselves are pretty fucking. They can go harsh. into your house. Well, this is you know they're trying to maintain their fucking. They're trying to flex apartheid their apartheid system thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In hindsight, <laughs> bad move. <laughs> well, it would all turn out very badly for them in the years to come. Well, it turns out they uh, the Indian people had a lot of spine at this point. Well, they want to like, fight, oh, and mm-hmm. Indy's uh, Indy Gandhi's like, Indy <laughs> Indy. <laughs> <laughs> you must go to Pankat Palace. <laughs> Indian Jones. Yeah. I will not fight you, Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> the ashram is yours. Indian. It belongs in a museum, but if you want it, here. <laughs> Who am I to tell you what to do with it? The <laughs> ashram is yours and mine. <laughs> <laughs> the ashram is ours, Gandhi. Yours and mine. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa, honey, I cannot hold you. <laughs> so they sing uh, "God Save the King" because the Indians sounds familiar, huh? The Indians are showing like that they're we, still patriots. We're British. Yes, we're you citizens. Know? We want equal rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, which do you think at this point, if the Brits are like, all right, equal rights, 
you're British citizens. It's the same laws as us. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the kerfuffle later could have been avoided? Maybe. It's. It, well, I know we're playing armchair quarterback. Maybe. Yes. I think so, too. Yeah. Representation, all that shit. Um, yeah. Eventually, it would have came down to we they would have always country. wanted more autonomy yeah it's i mean look at they're Canada. facing the same shit that the 13 colonies face. yes you know yeah oh a good point um, though look at canada yeah you know yeah it would have been a eventually Canadian it would have you know mm-hmm. it would it's going to get that way anyway right honorific title of king and queen but and, really the, and gandhi nothing. i don't think was all for self-rule uh until he was, you know? I think it was when like, he does the world tour of India. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I actually think it's like, it it's might even the be, massacre. it's after World War One for sure. Yeah, it's after mm-hmm. the massacre. The massacre tips yeah. is the tipping point. Yeah. Because it's like, these people are just don't belong here. It's only going to end with more violence. Because once World War One starts, he tells the Indian people, like, you should support. Well, right, right before this, ready? Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, after this speech, Gandhi's arrested. Again? The, yeah, he's arrested <laughs> again. And, you know, he's doing his Gandhi stuff. They basically release him. They get rid of the act and they throw him out of South Africa. Yes. And he's well, thrown they don't out. throw him No, he, out. he wins. Yeah, he, he wins. He wins, but I thought they're out. like. No, he leaves. He goes home. He's done. I, yeah. No, I thought they tell him like no. they want him to leave. Not really. No. Oh, he goes, he seat, goes on his own accord. He gives up money and he's like, I do not have money for a cab. Yes. You know? Yeah, they let him out of jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's like, I'm going to go home. And he goes home. And now we get, it's Bombay 1915. Yeah. Gandhi gives a speech that, mm. you know, we should support the British. Right, that was the um, the All Indian Congress, the Indian National Congress. Yes. Which is like, they are the Indian nationalists, right? They, they're they fighting for Indian rights, possibly independence. I don't know if they're there quite yet. But he says that the British should be supported in the war. And millions of Indians will go to Europe and fight in the trenches. And in 1917, there's an Indian dude in the movie. Mm-hmm. Is there? Yeah. yeah if oh, you, yes, yes. I in remember the, the first time I yeah. saw it, I was like, would this have happened? Oh, yeah. You know? Well, they had their own units. Uh, I think he's in he like was a mix. differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Sikhs. I can't wait to see that film. The Sikhs, who, who are, you know, the guys that will be shooting the Indians later, they're definitely part of the British. Okay. Army now, wait. And stuff. Uh, now, oh, yeah. now I'm going to be ignorant here. Okay. I thought, I thought Sikhs were a part of Hinduism. Are they not? No, they're their own religion. They're their own they're religion entirely. Thing. Yes. They're a small minority in India, and I, I think, I might be wrong on this, but I think they live in the north, like in the Himalayan region. Um, but yeah, they're the guys in the turbans. Is it like a, 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 a mix between like Hinduism and Buddhism? I, I don't know. Like en- I don't happened. know enough about it. I Me know um, that the Gurkhas, who are famous, famous They British- make pickles, the Gherkins. Gherkins, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Change sandwiches and burgers. You want to see forever. something cool? Look up the Gurkha um, sword. Uh, they they're famous for like being elite British units in the in the armies, and will fight. You know, mm. to this day, I think, especially in World War II against the Japanese and stuff. Yeah, there was some famous people, mm-hmm. uh, famous religious groups that it, became the Sikhs. It know? looks like there's a lot of like guru stuff with the Sikhs. Yeah. Um, so they have like five K's that they have to follow, apparently. Five K's? Yeah, that's like their pillars. Were they I have, have, have four hundred one of them. Were they going to four hundred one K's? Yeah. Were they going to wow. do three K's and then realize that's a bad idea? Four hundred one K. Four hundred one K. Oof. Yeah, that's good one. That was rough. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. So I I did not know that they were a separate religion. Then yeah. um, I thought in my mind. And again, I'm I'm ignorant of this. I thought that they were kind of like Orthodox Jews to Hindus. No, you know, like no. I thought they were a separate sect of Hinduism. Yes, um, I, I but I, I didn't cross over. I didn't know that they ideas. were their own religion. There's mm-hmm. definitely have to be some like similarities between the two in some weird way. So you cleared something up for me because I was wondering like why are these people listening to the British killing oh, yeah. their no, own they're people? They're a different group. Um, okay. Yeah, and I guess we sh- should we get into like. The ethnic background and makeup of what is India. We can get into it now because I'll be honest, I did not know that. I thought Pakistan had always been like its own region forever. Oh, God, no. I did not know that it was so recent. That's like less than 100 years old. Um, 
Well, I, I think the tr- there was tr- always like tribal. Um, I can tell you the story. Yeah? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, the British came to India in the 1700s, mm-hmm. right? And what they were, the East India Company, and they fought the French. We talked about this last week a little bit at the Seven Years' War. Mm-hmm. Um, what was there before them was the Mughal Empire. And the Mughals... From Final Fantasy. I was going to say the same thing, yes, yeah. Those, yeah. Kupo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mughals are they one of those... They hate magic. They believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> They're one of those successor kingdoms from the Mongols. Okay. So, you know, when Genghis is empire. Mughal! Empire- <laughs> That's Moogie. <Yeah. laughs> <I know>. Rom. <laughs> when, uh, when the Mongols, uh, when Genghis Khan's empire kind of fell apart, the Mughals are a Mongol uh, ruled Islamic sect that kind of okay. took over India. Um, India had been invaded. India, you know, it's historically the found. Bud- Buddhism started there, Hinduism started there, Sikhism started there. Um, it's polytheistic religions start there, right? Uh, kind of. Uh, depending on what yeah. you consider polytheistic. Uh, Hinduism was by far the majority of the people. Uh, the Muslims started coming in, you know, early on back in the Arab conquests. Mm-hmm. But it more or less stayed up north, Pakistan, modern day Pakistan. The Mughals were a Muslim empire that kind of ruled over the whole country. So you had a Muslim dominated state, much like the British dominant state that would mm-hmm. replace it. Um, so you have, they, they're used to a minority group controlling Ooh, the that, majority. Okay. Um, they're like, this is how life is. And as you can imagine, that would probably fester a lot of resentment Yes. Uh, among the major parts of the population. So this is, I think, why the Muslims were so adamant about separating into different countries. Uh, because they're like, now it's they're like, the turn. Hindus are going, to, are going to dominate us and hate us. Because that's yeah. what we did, and now it's their turn, and they're like, you know. I personally feel like it's not an unreasonable fear. And we will see um, when this all goes down, what a disaster it turns into. So, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I did not. We went over the ethnic makeup, so I guess we're good here. Mm-hmm. So now Gandhi is in India, and this guy pulls him aside and is like, "You don't know India at all." Yeah. And he's like, "I know nothing about this place. Like, I'm well, a foreigner." His here, father practically. was a rich guy. Yeah. His his father sent him to England to law school. You know, he's not familiar with the common man. And you're right. Yeah. That he sends him. And Gandhi oh. has, like, he's, I'm not sure if he's balding or starting to bald, but he has, like, really patchy hair, <laughs> and it looks horrible. Mm. And, like, did Gandhi shave his head, or did he decide to I go don't know. bald? I don't know. <laughs> I assumed he would, sh- it looks like he shaved it at first, because uh, he was wearing, um, like, a turban when he got off that boat. And all I think the, maybe he just shaved it to all wear All the that. famous photographs of him, or him bald. as an old man, mm-hmm. you know, and he's bald. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I've seen pictures of young Gandhi. I mean, he was also arrested a bunch. He might have just got really stressed. <laughs> Gandhi in love. <laughs> Gandhi too. <laughs> Remember that? From I love Gandhi too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a steak, medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> I keep mixing it up with uh, Conan the Conan Li- the Librarian. Conan, yeah, another great. Do one. you know the Dewey Decimal? Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> I love that movie so much. So he goes on this like. Journey to discover India by train, which a lot of trains in this too. India is all about trains. Love trains. You ever see Darjeeling Limited? British and <laughs> British empires love their trains. They love it. They can't get enough trains. Yeah, and they're Indians listening. Like, to, down to Cairo. <laughs> they're listening to friggin' Stephen Porcupine Trees trains. Yes, yeah, they're jamming out. Always the summer slipping away. Everyone knows that song. It's like the best uh, one ever. <laughs> it shows Indians love riding on top of trains. I thought that scene was funny. That scene's cool when getting, they have mm-hmm. the priest up, up with up them. Here. So dangerous. My yeah. wife drinks dangerous. blood every Sunday. Oh, what? Christian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a joke. Yeah, it makes He's a joke. like, what? <laughs> it was funny. But that, that was a good like miscommunication joke, that, uh, you know? There was a couple of things that happened before then. All right, so uh, now we get to a point where insurgents have derailed a train. Yeah. Oh, is that happened that early on? Mm-hmm. And Gandhi, get, we're already probably like an hour in. Yeah. Uh, and now Gandhi gives a speech about, you know, that... There's terrorism happening. There's terrorism. We need to be nonviolence and mm-hmm. all this. And we get to his hut, which looks like a McDonald's. 
<laughs> Does it? Yeah, from the inside. It has like arches and like <laughs> just kind of reminded I don't remember me, if you remi- say so. <laughs> it looked like a McDonald's. There was a clown and a yeah. purple blob man. <laughs> the grimace. Nothing yeah. <laughs> nothing can stop the grimace. <laughs> Do you know the Do you know what the grimace is supposed to be? No, do you? The grimace is when you're sucking a milkshake. I'm dead serious. You know, like when you're sucking a milkshake through a straw and it gets like stuck in the straw. That's just, yeah. And like it's not coming up. Okay. That's the grimace. Purple he's a blockage. Yeah, he's a blockage. Purple blockage. Yeah. He's I'm, a blood clot. He's a oh, milkshake. Oh, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> the grimace is a blockage. I'm the stroke you're going to have from eating fast food. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. Give what me is, the bloody lie. What is, what is with the Calvary? In cavalry? This? Yeah. What do you mean? So Gandhi, Gandhi uh, rallies some people again after a speech, and they're going to go march uh, against like these workers or something. Like These workers aren't getting paid. So he always police cavalry that his, come in. His gimmick is always he finds an unjust law and focuses in yeah. on it. And one like, law at a time. Yeah. But this cavalry messed messed my head up because it's like they're charging at them and they're all scared and they're like, lay down, the horse won't trample us, and they'll lay down. Oh Remember yeah. Scene? Yeah, that's a good scene. Yeah. So what so was any happening there? Cavalry charge could have been stopped by people laying down. Imagine the balls it takes to do that. I mean, Braveheart could have just, instead of spear, they could have just laid Imagine down. Imagine the fucking mental fortitude it would take to throw yourself on the ground in front Insane, of charging But does horses. this work? I don't know. <laughs> the movie says it does. Thousands of years of cavalry charges. Nobody ever just laid down until that well, moment. Well, you know what's know interesting about it? Well, you no- can't fight back from that position. Napoleon discovered, yeah, I mean, if men are trying to kill you, it's not going to work, is it? They'll just kill you. Yeah. Um, yes. These guys didn't want to kill them so per se. They just, they they just wanted to. They wanted them. to just disperse them. Yeah. Napoleon figured out that if you put them in the squares, the cavalry squares. Yeah. You, know, you ever see like the Battle of Waterloo? Yeah. yeah. They tra- the horses won't charge into them, so they go around them. You know. Interesting. There's interesting horse psychology out there yeah. that people need to figure out. <laughs> if you know horses, you're like, oh yeah. Now again. <laughs> and of course, he gets arrested again. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you want to hear a fun horse story? Yeah. When I was a kid, my parents took me to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where the Amish live. Okay. You met Mr. Hands. No. <laughs> um, Zoo starring Anthony Galati. <laughs> we were walking through like this farm area, and there was a pony. It was a small horse, and it had a massive erection. Like it's it's dick. <laughs> this, this is his dick was. You holding. pulled a Freddy got finger, didn't you? His dick was like practically touching. <laughs> Look at me, the Daddy. I was like eleven years old, and me and my dad are standing <laughs> there. This is, this is getting closer and closer. To <laughs> me and my dad are standing there looking at this giant horse. See that son? <laughs> That's a. You'll never be a man. And he goes. He's really hung like a horse. <laughs> Great joke. Yes. And I look at him, and there's a woman, like, standing a couple of feet away looking at the same thing, and she just starts laughing and goes, he sure is. <laughs> oh, do you think she was like, No. Yeah. It was just, like, a weird <laughs> experience. Oh, I thought they had a hearty laugh. That was together. it. Yeah, and we all, like, just laughed all together. Kids. We all shared a nice <laughs> horse laugh looking at this horse erection. Look at that horse cock son. What a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is shining. <laughs> what would you have done if Tom Green came? year old you laughing yeah. at them. You don't know why. <laughs> what would you have done? I knew why. I was looking at a giant horse cock. This is great. What would you have done? Family fun. <laughs> What would you have done if Tom Green came out and just started jerking off the horse in front of you? Uh, I, what does one do when Tom Green is jerking off the horse? I in laugh. Front of you? Yeah, I mean, I'd <laughs> enjoy giggle, it. Giggle. Sure. You didn't like Tom Green, right? I just didn't like anything that was popular. I'm sure if I took the time to actually watch it, I would have liked it. Well, later in life, you've seen Tom clips. Green is a genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Green is fucking hysterical. Freddy Got Fingered is a masterpiece. Anyone yes. who disagrees is dumb. <laughs> Um, but yeah, when it was popular at the time, I didn't watch it, and I was like, "This is bullshit. This is for fucking normal people. I like metal. <laughs> <laughs> I like metal." Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we see some people playing cricket. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on cricket? Wait, is this in? This is uh, when he's arrested in the prison. Looks better than a Turkish prison, I'll say that. <laughs> All these prisons look better than the Turkish prisons. I mean, no one's hitting the bottom of your feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you think about cricket? 
I mean, it's shitty baseball. Confusing. It's weird, right? Like, right. I don't understand the rules at all. I don't like the pads they wear. Yeah, it's all it's white, a, it's a weird right? Bat. <laughs> it's a weird bat. Steve Hogarth has a magical cricket bat that plays musical notes. That's true. And then he breaks it when he gets mad yes. and then jumps into the crowd. <laughs> and then they write a song about it on the next album. <laughs> <laughs> joke for... Wow. Joke for, for literally no one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It's not even a joke. It's just what happened. Yeah. Maybe 10 people, <laughs> if we're lucky, too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, he uh, he got arrested for that, but they they let him go mm -hmm. again. Oh, so now we get uh, we'll skip to this. Uh, so we get to a point where Gandhi's like, I got a way to fuck the Brits. How? We're gonna have a national day of prayer and fasting. Yeah, this is the big this is big shit. Yep. And one day everyone in India doesn't go to work. They we're not doing anything. Yeah. The colony is dead. You yeah. killed the colony. You killed the biggest colony on earth. Like, what can you do? What can you do? They're not working. Yeah. Yep. It's just such that a That is hit. power. 350 yeah. million people. Well, the majority is rising up. That is a, that is, that makes Gandhi like a fucking force. The to game is over at that point. Yeah. Well, Gandhi If they can do hand. this, they can do whatever they want. Gandhi yeah. showed his hand and is like, this is the, the stick I'm wielding. Mm -hmm. And it was noticed. Yeah. Very much so. So now we get to the point where um, there's riots from the Indians. Yes, and he hates that. And he hates that. And some English people are killed. Yes. And he's like... Yeah, even though the boycott or the, the strike is insanely effective, he calls it off immediately mm -hmm. because he sees that it's leading to violence. They had that scene where like some guys like with torches... Right. Yeah, that's We're the walking through the village, and then that's the riot. They arms. burn the um, like the barracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes. know, they attack some British soldiers, mm -hmm. yeah. and Gandhi's pissed, and he's like, "We need to do more nonviolence." Well, if you don't stop, I'm just gonna kill myself. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Emo Gandhi. So <laughs> even in here, we live on the tyranny. He had some quips. He has some wife jokes. He, he he's, he's writing letters to Hitler. Letters to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> he was a jokester sometimes. So. Letters to Hitler, starring Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we get to the point where um, the massacre. Yeah. Oh, you skipped the the starving village where he gets arrested again. See, that's how many. That's how much it happens. It happens a lot. You know, it's crazy. Dude, the movie's a blur to me. Like it, he it was, he it rides was three elephant. hours of like. <laughs> yeah, he stuff. rides an elephant. I skipped I all that. Sends the priest away. Uh, yeah. they were they're like we have to disturb the peace. Oh yeah, he told the priest yeah. he's like no white people can help us. We can't have it's a white Indian savior. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's got to be just Indians. Uh, and then they start fasting. Yeah. So now we get the British massacre. Yeah. So it's the best way to gain support from people just murder everyone. So the guy's name is Reginald uh, Dyer. D D Y E R. Is that Dwyer or D Dyer? D Y E R. Yeah. Dyer. Dyer. Dyer right. So he gives the order mm -hmm. to fucking Amherstar. massacre massacre these these Indians. And they, yep. Everything it, I saw about this guy, he's a straight up just psychopath. Yes, it's the <laughs> Jolly and Walla Bog massacre. Yes, yes. And I probably butchered that, but that's what it is. That's the name the of it. Amherstar massacre. Yes, Amherstar is the town. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the protesters there. There had been, uh, like, an order that they had to disperse, and no one ever told them that. So it never got to them. They didn't know, like, they were in danger at all. They were gathered in, like, this square. Are you saying this as the movie or yeah, as this is what happened in real life? Reality. Uh, okay. Well, you got something else? I was under the impression that uh, the, act, the call actually went out because the people, when they burned the garrison— and they were attacking the cops. They said, "Okay, now you can't meet anymore. It's martial law." Mm -hmm. Then they they were told they oh met, really they met anyway. Okay, yeah. Well, they they peacefully met. Yeah. And they're sitting in this uh, like square they're around like a well. It's surrounded yeah. by like there walls. was a well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's this guy shows up the the commander with he has ninety men with them. And in the movie, they're Sikhs. Or, um, that's probably what they were. He probably had some yeah. Brits with yeah, him, I'm sure. Too. It was yeah. a mix, yeah. Uh, and he's got a fucking armored car with a machine gun. Yep. But it doesn't fit through, like, the the alleyway, so he can't tank. use it. Thank God for those Indians. 
So he brings his guys into the square, and they just open fire. Yeah. Do you, you want the start, numbers? I got the numbers. The numbers but go are ahead. Real. 379 identified dead. Yep. 337 men. 41 boys, a six week old baby. Yep. 1,000 were, wo- no, sorry, 1,100 were wounded. Mm-hmm. 192 were seriously injured. Yep. This is massive. Oh, Insane. Yeah. It's crazy. It's 1,500 casualties, basically. Yep. He was arrested and put on trial. Yeah. He gets he no. Got he so gets the bad. nickname the Butcher of Armistar. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he went to jail, right? He was forced to resign. Yeah, he didn't go to jail. He didn't go to jail. He was forced to resign, I believe. I don't think he went to jail. Wow, you could double check it. I, I might be wrong. But, but in sure. in his like fucked up in mind, parliaments, there were praise and condemnation uh-huh. of him. In yeah, some people Britain. said he did what had to be done. I think um, it's fucked up. This is before World War Two, right? We didn't get to that point yet. I no, no. Um, this is this is during World War. No, this one, is like nineteen twenties. Like yeah, this is in the twenties. Yeah. in the twenties. Um, there are still people in the British Parliament at this point that are like, Empire, Empire, Empire. The oh, we, of course, we're not. Yeah. We're not giving an inch. Winston Churchill being the most prominent of them. Winston, no, um, Winston Churchill hated the fact that this happened. I'm sure he hated yeah. the fact that it happened, but was, he yeah. is. He is loyal to one thing, and it's the empire. Sure, yeah. you know he will do anything in his power to keep it up. Yeah. But there, that um, that thought process definitely is like in this guy's head, the soldier, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I am a hero. I'm going to fucking put down this rebellion." Right. He's a fucking nut job. Well, uh, he's killing. He's it, killing like, unarmed people. Well, well here's what Winston. Weeks before they were killing cops. Here's what so Winston. They, he, he didn't know. Here's what Winston no Churchill. Obviously, Wait, it's not this group. No, no. You know? <laughs> in, in his mind, it probably didn't matter. It's a group. Yeah, he it's looked at them all yeah. as the same thing. Exactly. Yes. He was evil. Yeah. Well, here's what Winston Churchill said about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is an episode without precedent or parallel in the modern history of the British Empire. An extraordinary event, a monstrous event, an event which stands in singular and sinister isolation. The crowd was neither armed nor attacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. He said, my own opinion is that the offense amounted to murder or alternatively manslaughter. There you go. So Churchill is like, this guy's fucking monster. Yeah. And did he get charged for manslaughter? I do not believe so. I cannot find an actual, like, He's rule. on trial in the movie, too. Oh, yeah, but yeah. they don't show him get tried. Um, yeah. Because they just forced him to resign. <laughs> I have to think this guy went to jail. I don't know. I really don't know. If, if Parliament is split, half think you did mm-hmm. it right, half think you did it wrong, right. the, it's, you don't have a majority. Yeah, and there may, it might be like a military tribunal situation right. where they keep it out of the regular courts. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, well, but now I'm we sure have someone does. Yeah. <laughs> Not us in this room. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> oh, okay, here you go. You got um, it. Yeah, I found it. Churchill, the then Secretary of War, wanted Dwyer to be disciplined, but the Army Council suspended him. Uh, superseded Churchill, sorry, and decided the to. Army protected him. They yep. allowed Dwyer to resign with no plan for further punishment. That's it. Wow. Following Separate. Churchill's speech, they had a vote, um, and 247 to 37 of a motion calling for approval of Dwyer's actions was defeated by a majority. Mm-hmm. So the majority was like, he was right. And I think this moment is a turning point personally for Gandhi, yes. where it's like. Okay, it's independence or nothing else. Yeah. Like, we're not working with them anymore. No, there's no co-op. Yeah. Would you blame right. him after no, that? No, God, like, no. Like, that's insane. Uh, yeah. Is this, like, when he really gets involved with the, uh, the like, cabal there? The, the, um, well, that had happened, but we could talk the about it. national convention. We could talk about that. That happened earlier, but yeah. we could talk more in detail. But now. he has a bit, he has a bigger convention after this. He has a giant meeting where he's sitting on this like white blanket. And Is this the intermission? Yes, it's intermission. Right after that, yeah, yeah. Well, it's inter- an intermission. Mine didn't have an intermission. Uh, it had it's it. when you were taking your nap. No, no, no. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. What what part had the right intermission? After, right after so, this scene, after, after the, massacre, the massacre, Gandhi walks up to the well and he sees blood on it. Because the real story, people jumped into the well to avoid the bullets and but the bullets and died. In the well. Oh, yeah, I remember him walking up to the mat. And then it, it shuts off, and it just goes intermission, and it's like cool Indian music. Oh, mine didn't have that. <laughs> mm. Oh. You, why do you never get the intermission? I don't know. That's weird. What did you watch it on? Uh, Amazon? You, Amazon, yeah. Oh, I watched it on, like, cable VOD. Oh, okay. That's probably why they <laughs> Maybe got they out. got rid of it. Yeah, I guess. So, that well, like I said, in that, that Congress, kind of, it's a ton of people there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like... 
we're all buying English stuff. We got to stop that. We got to get nude. Oh, know? yeah. That's what we got to do. He's like, we got to stop yeah. buying uh, the cloth. No yeah. more clothes. Let's all get naked. Right. And that's pretty close to what he would do, apparently. That yeah, I he made about. his all. Then he <laughs> he walked around in like adult diapers. Is this yeah. when he started wearing the get up? He was slowly cloth? started to. Once he was arrested, that's when he's like, I'm going to wear right. prisoner clothes. And then eventually I'm going to wear only my own. Right. He kind of turned the spinning wheel into like the symbol of Indian nationalism. Yes. The spinning wheel meaning like. It was. You see it all making. over the place, too. Yeah. Which, right. Uh, um, makes sense. And it's like, yeah, everyone needs to make their own shit. We got to stop giving them our business. Yeah. No more helping them. Right. Fuck them. We just got to get nude. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Okay, Gandhi. Sure. So, <laughs> so now we get to it's the point time, but whatever. where after the slaughter, some Indians are fucking like brutal about it. You will be my daughter. And the Indians are pissed. So they start attacking back. Mm. And Gandhi says, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, his famous quote. And now Gandhi's like, I'm going to fast. And this is his first fast. Well, you meet the blonde chick. Does she show up here? Before this. Like right uh, before. You yeah. will be my daughter. Yep, it's the daughter of so an ad- admiral. <laughs> yeah, there's a massive cloth burning. Call mm-hmm. me daddy. Now this was weird. This girl. Yeah. Did she was, did she want to fuck Gandhi? Like, I'm so I'm confused by this relationship. See, in Brian's mind, the only way a man and a woman can be friends is if they're fucking. <laughs> That's correct. Brian is an old Hollywood writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird to me that this like this young British woman who kind of looks like Meryl Streep. She's clearly like a rich girl who's infatuated with you know this. She's a life. Yeah. She's an awful. She's an awful. She's a hippie. <laughs> She's an hippie. <laughs> Should we explain what an awful is? It's a affluent white liberal woman. Female liberal. Female, female white liberal. Affluent yeah. white female white liberal. Oh, awful. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I had to think about that. I'm like, why are they saying she's awful? Oh, wow. So that's what she is, and she's all about Gandhi. Yes. Makes no sense. I thought that they were going to have like a love affair or something. Me too. I was like, why? I'm shocked that his wife let her in the house to just hang out. She's but, you know, she's completely devoted to him at this point. I wonder, this has got to be after his 38-year-old celibacy bit. Yes, so. it has to be after. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Gandhi hasn't fucked in a long time. Right. And he's getting a young chippy to hang around with. Yeah. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Get naked. Tempt me. Yes. Tempt, 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 tempt me. me. Ooh. <laughs> Go on, Gandhi. You're so sultry. <laughs> What's hot tea going on? So in Gandhi starts fasting. Yeah. yeah. Kills the guy. And <laughs> I love that scene. Wait, what? When, he, when they kill the cop, why he starts fasting? Is a guy runs up with a homemade axe and goes, ah, and chops oh, the shit. guy's head off. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. It was very funny. <laughs> so Gandhi is fasting because of this. And it's ironic they call it fasting because you actually die slowly. Mm, if anything, yeah. they should call it slowing. Why do they call it round team? Why don't they call it round team? <laughs> the glass is round, the container's round. <laughs> Why do I do this? <laughs> so <laughs> why do I, why do I come here? <laughs> so everyone wants the fast to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm just gonna kill myself. Yeah, you Gandhi, don't, don't kill yourself. No, I'm killing so myself. I'm if do you don't I'm do what I want it. you to, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to die, Gandhi. Gandhi, we don't want you to die. Gandhi, <laughs> give life a try. <laughs> Cartman. Yeah. <laughs> Evil <laughs> always falls. <laughs> so That's some bullshit. So Gandhi pleads guilty. Yeah. Uh, after he's arrested again, and he's giving six. He's given six years, and we find out that he gets he, out in two. Yep. This was first edition, right? Yeah. We yeah. find out that he was married at thirteen. Insane. Yeah. Oh, he tells it to the white girl, or his wife They're tells it to the him, white girl. Uh, Indian vows. Yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. this is how we did our vows. Oh, right, said. they're at his hometown. Yeah, this is when he comes up with the salt march. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the New York Times reporter comes back and Martin Sheen, Martin Sheen, and it's just like I'm gonna go make salt now. And yes. It's like okay, that's when he gets out. In the so- future, I will be the host of the Eyewitness Science <laughs> VHS collection in the '90s. I watched all those. I don't know what you're talking. You don't know what I'm talking about. There what was like, the fuck. Yeah, there was like a series of these VHS tapes and called Gandhi I, was the host. No, I witnessed <laughs> Martin Sheen was like there was one like volcano and it was oh, Martin Sheen God. teaching you all about volcanoes. I love them. 
<laughs> okay, I've never heard of this. <laughs> So Martin Sheen is playing. <laughs> um, He's doing science stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever? Do you know what a tectonic plate is? <laughs> <laughs> this is the macaw. It is an endangered parrot. Isn't Gandhi a character on Clone High? <laughs> What's Clone High? You don't remember that? It was a show that got canceled. I think it came back where it was all a uh, high school of all cloned historical figures. It's like oh, it's oh. like a young Abraham Lincoln, a young Gandhi, oh. and like they all go to high school together at Clone High. The Mariana Trench is deep, but not as deep as peace. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin Sheen has this like he talks. Well, him. he's playing a guy called he's playing a fictional character who's based on a real guy. He's based. On oh a, yeah, the real guy he's based on is Webb Miller. And you know, it's I I just realized something. I'm sorry to interrupt you, no. but uh, Lawrence of Arabia had an re- American reporter guy. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's... Was this guy, uh, was this real guy like a New York Times reporter at least? Or? This guy was really, um, he he was a New York Times reporter. The real guy's name was Webb Miller. Mm-hmm. And he actually like really, kind of like in the movie, he really helped spread Gandhi like into like, the Western mm-hmm. conscious and got like, you know, certainly for Americans, I Americans imagine. to be like, you know, this is fucked up. Right. And this kind of comes back to, uh, at least for this scene, what I said earlier, where I think he kind of like accidentally fell into popularity is that the New York times reporter, he, as he's walking and he's just like, we need to let them know, like we're in control. And you see the reporter stop and his partner's like, what did he say? He goes, he said he's in control. And it's <laughs> like the New York times got it wrong again. <laughs> like they just keep doing fake it. news, fake news, you fake, fake news, news, New York Times. <laughs> and then, and then you know you nothing know, about Gandhi, okay? Then, it spreads, and everyone's like, Gandhi's in control. And he's like, No, I just wanted to make salt. It's, it's a big, beautiful, <laughs> peaceful protest. It's the best protest. <laughs> We're gonna make India great again, okay? <laughs> Gandhi Trump. <laughs> So I just saw an intro. That would definitely have a different dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just saw an interesting tidbit about the real reporter. In when Miller met Gandhi, he was carrying a cigarette case. Okay. And he said, I want you to inscribe your name on this. And Gandhi said, I will if you never if the case is never used to carry cigarettes again. He doesn't like cigarettes? I guess because it's a vice. Mm-hmm. Miller agreed, and Gandhi signed it. He carried that cigarette case with him throughout everywhere he went in the world, and he got it inscribed by some of the following people. Oh. Get ready, because your mind is going to be blown. Hitler. Okay. Mussolini. Okay. Oh, God. FDR. Okay. David Lloyd George. Wow. Adolf Hitler. Oh, shit. I knew it. And Vicente Blasco Ibanez. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, who is that? That's probably know. something cool. I think that's a um, in the Spanish Civil War. I think that was one of the communists. That's a fucking okay. lighter. But the so oh, it's cigarette a cigarette case. It was signed case. by like a who's who of the early of the, yeah of the of the twenties and thirties. But imagine having something signed by Gandhi and Hitler. You have like the most notorious like peaceful guy. Uh, and then Hitler. pen pals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's true. laughs> uh, after his death, the case was stolen and has never reappeared. That's in somebody's attic, right? Now. Right, yeah. like someone <laughs> stole it and has just been holding it. Wow, how much do you think that thing is worth? It's, that's a nice it, autograph. It's priceless. Box. It's priceless. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's, that's, we that's are passing through history. The cigarette case <laughs> is history. <laughs> that should be in a museum. Again, I hate saying it. I know, <laughs> but that time I was being honest. All right. Be. So Gandhi wants to make salt, mm. and at this point, I was like craving a burger because we know I uh, love to put salt on my burger. I wanted curry. Oh, this whole movie, I wanted curry, and not, that's not like Brian. A, tell a people thing. what you order at Wendy's. Oh. The Brian order? Yeah. Why don't you tell people what I order at Wendy's? Every time Brian goes to order. Wendy's, he gets a triple cheeseburger with bacon. No. No. Triple, oh, cheeseburger, triple cheeseburger, only, cheeseburger onion and cheese. only onions and cheese. He gets rid of the lettuce and tomato because it's the one thing that's not bad for him. Yeah. And then he takes like 10 packets of salt. He dumps g- it. And he dumps it on the burger. Also, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's, 10 is a little, it's, is an exaggeration. How many? How many? Four. Typically one Four. or two. Okay, it's still too much. 
And he, and yeah, that's what he gets. On, yeah. Only onions and cheese. You forgot about yep. the ma- another huge part of that. What? Diet Coke no ice. Uh, right. Large <laughs> Diet Coke no ice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a giant tub of of unrestrained Diet Coke. The ice isn't even in there to just displace well, some here's, of it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> It's Fuck dilution. Well, here's the thing. I'm not a get. I'm the opposite of Gandhi. I don't fast. Clearly, I mean, fucking everyone can see. But the thing is, it's not that I'm opposed to the ice. It's I worked at restaurants. You worked at restaurants. Yes. You know the ice is used. They tell all these people yeah. fill it with ice to the max, to the max, yeah. so they get no liquid. Yes. Yeah. And if you tell these people not a lot of ice, they're still gonna do. They're it. They're still gonna do it. All right. So you're my only option. Is no ice. Yeah, but you don't need all the soda. Why don't you just get a small soda? Or you enjoy the soda, then when the ice melts, <laughs> well, you have water. <laughs> I, I only drink soda, first of all. You only drink soda? When have you ever seen me drink any, anything different? You don't drink water? No. Occasionally, I have a Gatorade or Powerade <laughs> if I'm done working out. Why do you work out? <laughs> <laughs> Why bother? That was the most sincere. That was the most sincere thing I think you've ever said. That was so painfully sincere. What ifs? All right. So during the assault, uh, you see the police being police. You There's know, a law that says up. India cannot make salt. No yeah. Indians can make salt. Because once they do this, they control the means of production. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Because yes. the British... Uh, well, the British a, are making tons monopoly. of money on a salt tax. They specifically said they have a monopoly on the salt production there. Right. So, yes. They need that. The Huge. Brits give an order, arrest everybody but Gandhi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they don't want to martyr him. Well, he marches across the country, like, to the sea. And starts yep. making salt in the ocean. The march is insanely long. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and thousands of people join him. Yes. It, it's like a 4,000 mile march. Mm-hmm. It's something ridiculous. How do you make salt from the ocean? Does anybody know? You, uh, you take. I think it dries, right? You water. Boil it. You have to boil the water off of the salt, off the salt and scrape it. Basically. So did he like make a fire on the beach? No, that was sand. That was like, look, I have the sand that's going to make the salt. Yeah. Uh, okay, but he made salt. So did he have to like like make a campfire and put it in a pot? Yeah, you have to like you you take the water, you filter it out, you mm-hmm. boil it till the water is completely gone, and then you get the salt off right. the the edge. So yeah, this I guess starts so. a trend where everyone all over the country is making salt. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're all like, "Fuck you, Brits! You yeah. can't stop us!" Right. This is equally as impressive as the other one where he shut the country down. And then they try to they try to get into a salt factory. Oh, yeah. Was that a salt factory? I think so. This is the best scene in the movie. I like the massacre scene. (laughs) It's a bad strategy. Let's line up and get our asses beat. I was I was honestly like moved by the force of, you know, the dedication of of peaceful protest. Yes. Yeah. Like it's like, holy shit. These people just keep walking into armed guards who beat them up. And then they just they get there and they just keep doing it. They stand up and they do it again. And all day and night they just. In a, a medical booth, yeah. like kind of like a little uh, table. It, that was inspiring. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It's a great scene. Would you be able to do that, or would you resort to violence? What do you think you would fall I couldn't do it. it? I don't have that. No, Me? like if, kind of. if you are put in that position, you have a choice. It's peaceful protest like that, or straight violence like you see later on. What That's you, what the British would love. What do you, you know? They no, no. What do you fall into personally? I'm violent. I would say we need to kill every single Brit. I know. I know me. Yeah, I know you. I'd be like, I'm vengeance oh, incarnate. I mean, like grand strategy wise, you mean? What do you do? You fall under peaceful protest or violence? What do you fall under in the solution? You're Gandhi. You're are Gandhi. you preaching Gandhi shit, or are you, are you gonna actually tell Obviously the truth? <laughs> the, I mean, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you're not gonna say we need to just get massacred. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're not gonna do that. Yeah, right. So don't pretend like you're fucking holy. No, I'm just saying hindsight tells us that Gandhi was right. Yes, right? but I know myself and I know you. Yeah, but you also know <laughs> hindsight right now, and if put into a position, you choose peace or violence. I think it worked. Like we said when we first started talking. It takes a certain type of government that this is going to work in, you know? Um, most governments are not. You're being such a politician right the, now. Look, I'm just saying what, what happened. Go? I'm just talking about what happened in the movie. <laughs> um, this is a unique situation where it worked. That, that's, it, gave in, it gave in 
independence. Right. Stemmed from this. Yes. 100,000 people crowded the road. Holy crap. Apparently. Wait, that w- the road towards the, the salt plant? Leading up to the salt plant, yeah. Mm. Oh, they only showed like 50 in this. Um, 100,000? That's so yeah, brutal. I'm trying to find you know, the you, distance. You really, really have to appreciate happening? the number of people living in India. Then were those beatings actually happening, or were they just lined up outside? I wonder. Because 100,000 people, if you're a security guard, I'm not hitting anyone. The movie just, certainly didn't portray it that way. They didn't. Yeah. It, it looked like a small group. Uh, it I would have liked to see that. They group. walked 385 kilometers. Mm. Oh, my God. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's so yeah. excessive. So... Uh, we get to the point that now. 100 miles or so over. How many it's miles that. is that? It's more than that. Yeah. Uh, the Indians do not use any violence. They get the shit beat out of them. Gandhi yeah. meets Brits and I he like goes to England. Bon voyage, Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a newsreel, right? It's funny. Yeah. yeah. Is this before World War II? Has that happened yet? Uh, it's happening right after it's this. It's happening right after yeah. this. Uh-huh. So he goes to England. And they give him a tour, and they're, like, parading Gandhi around. Mm-hmm. And they're like, look, it's the Gandhi, you know. The cloth. <laughs> and they're like, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so he, Gandhi comes back, and he meets Cliff from Cheers. <laughs> and he, he showed, like, the lower classes were kind of on his side. Yeah, the poor oh, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this woman reporter, who's a real photographer, Mm -hmm. who took the photographs that when we think of Gandhi... We've seen them. We've seen them. That's who we're thinking of, yeah. That's cool they put her in. Yeah, she took the photos Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, they spoke and all this. Um, Gets arrested again. (laughs) Yep. Well, and he's in, like, a gilded cage, basically, at this point. He's in a nice house, but he's under house arrest. Look, none of this matters. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, let's be, let's be fair. Yeah, it doesn't matter until he goes back to. Well, then he tells he, he has well, like some violent protesters, I guess. And so then he tells them, "Work will set you free." Or work, no, uh, no, he definitely, he definitely doesn't say that. <laughs> work will he, set that you is free? not the line. Work Gandhi's <laughs> famous quote: <laughs> "Breed fry." He got it from his, his pen pal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Work will make you happy. No, it's a joke. It was a joke. God the joke was, did he say work makes you happy or free? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's written on the 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 main walkway into the town hall yeah. of Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So can I tell you a story? Yeah. About work ma- making you happy or free? <laughs> free. So when I was working at Applebee's, I hated it. And I used to work like eight doubles in a row and mm-hmm. like torture myself to make money so I could pay my rent. And this girl was, like, asking me, and she's like, how do you, like, go on? And I was like, I was like, there's an expression <laughs> my, my German ancestors have, <laughs> a Brit mach frein. That's what keeps me going. And she, I like how you're just fucking with this girl. has no idea what you're talking she's about. She's an old time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, just say it whenever you, like, need to be motivated. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I do. I do. That's what Very Gandhi good. does too, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he says like, "Oh, uh, do what makes you happy. Work th- that'll make you happy." As he's talking mm-hmm. to like the, the photographer, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the first thing that popped in my head. Did he All just right. say it'll set you free? <laughs> Is that when his wife dies of a heart attack? Yeah, she died in prison. Yeah. Did she actually? I'm assuming that's true. Yeah, she yeah. Died. She died in prison. I mean, their prison was really nice. They got to stay together, but that's mm-hmm. s- Gandhi is very sad. Yes, yeah, that sucks. Um. So a little bit about uh, India and World War II and Gandhi. He told the British government, essentially, that no Indians will fight for them unless they promise independence after the war, mm-hmm. uh, which they do. Um, the British keep their word. Yes. The, the Churchill administration never would have done this, but he got voted out, so nobody cares when the, when the war is over, you know? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, and then he ends up coming back later. Churchill? Yeah. No. No, yeah. He serves as prime minister twice. No. Nah, after the war. After the war. After the war, he's he's he um he's not prime minister. On and then he comes back. Hold uh, on. No. I think you're incorrect there. And if you are correct, my mind is gonna be fucking blown. <laughs> <laughs> or was he prime minister before? Um like right before the war, then during Yeah. Uh India in World War II, definitely under the gun. Burma was invaded by the Japanese. 
Yeah. Um, Indians will fight in Egypt. Yeah, in that's that's a, a a section of the world. Uh, at least when it comes to World War II, you don't hear a lot and you don't see a lot of uh, portrayals. Like Not here. Movies or shows, you never get that. Um, I mean, you've heard of the Burma Road. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying like in, in modern media, you never see a Indian World War II movie. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, stuff was going on. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they fought all over. Europe, Africa, Asia. Mm-hmm. What do you got, Brian? Just give me a second. I think when looking at the... Like the casualty numbers, though, mm-hmm. I don't think they are high on the list. I, th- it was I'm, a smaller population. I think I, we can look this up, but I think something around four million um, Indians died. Four million? Yeah. Are we <laughs> in World War Two? In really? World War Two. Yeah. I will oh, Google that was, in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking four hundred thousand. So in 1945 to 1951, Churchill is the leader of the opposition party. But he's not the prime minister. He is not the prime minister. He Uh, becomes prime minister again in 1951 until 1955. There you go. 50s. You put me in my fucking place. You have to to remember. You You love Churchill. You have to remember I love Churchill and I have like a bulldog like statue of him in my my (laughs) office. (laughs) He was, do you remember for years he was the... Uh, background on my on my uh, computer. No, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had uh, the like the famous picture. I'd have to Churchill. edit on his computer sometimes, and when like you shut down the editing software, it's just him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's see how many, how many Indians died in the fir- in the Second World War. Yeah, I feel like that was. Uh, I feel hmm. like you're more correct, but I okay. Was low. Uh, Indian casualties in World War Two. 87,000 Indian I'm troops. So wrong. I'm getting And dicks. hold on, hold on, hold on. Civilians. And 3 million civilians died. There you go. 3 million. Okay. Maybe that, I'm like I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the, maybe I read the military yeah. casualties. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you both were right, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. That's still wow, 3 million. Yeah. But war ends. And now it's time to make good on the promise, and in 1947... The British Army had just won the war. (laughs) I heard the news. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) So Jenna was always a a sly dog in this film. Jenna, yeah. The the Pakistan... The Muslim leader. He is the father of Pakistan. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, And... no doubt about it. So this is a guy that's been in the movie for a while at this point, and he is... Um, He's always wanted to take the path of violence, though. He always tends towards that. Yeah. Um, Gandhi's always like, shut up. Yeah, he always gets put in his place. He's like Worf. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If the Indian National Congress was the crew of the Enterprise... Ben Kingsley is obviously Picard. Yeah. <laughs> Use diplomacy, hair, right? Yeah. Style. Unfortunately, that in, other guy he's with is is Riker. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> in thirty years, Gandhi's gonna be like, remember all the asses we kicked <laughs> along the way, all the explosions and adventure. <laughs> Jenna is the wharf of the crew, right. and he always finds the attacking. military s- solution Picard's and gets put all. in his place. Yep. Um, Peace is the solution here. But now that independence is happening, you have this opportunity to give the ethnic groups of India kind of what they want. It's a vacuum. Yeah. It's a vacuum of, like, who's taking what area. I think I think the British take on the whole situation is like, well, it's up to you guys. This is what you wanted. We're out. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> left. And they just, they just bounce. Now, do you think part <laughs> of their reluctance to deal with this shit is because of the clusterfuck with um, kind of Saudi Arabia after World War One, like the T.E. Lawrence shit? I think it's more to do with like it's just not our problem. They're like fuck it. Yeah, they want. They definitely want to have a secular India, like not so much a, a Hindu India. I feel like that's Hindu. what Gandhi wanted too. That is what he wanted. Yeah. Um, they together. want an ally in the Cold War. Um, but at the same time, you can't really deal with the racial and religious problem. It's a long term thing. You know, it's like. Is it going to be easier to separate them, or do we keep these people that hate each other and make them live together? And how long have they hated each other for? Was the, it before the British even got yes, there? Yes, you know, like this is ancient that is shit. So brutal. Like yeah. the only reason they're being they're ki- not killing each other is, is one they united against the British, and two the British are dominating them. Yeah, the so British it's like, kept, <laughs> like they were abusive, but they kept the order away. They from kept the order the, right. Yes, like. And I'm sorry, I don't know if we said this. How did the British end up having control of India? Because it was a French territory, correct? Well, they they kicked the French out. Is the Mughal Empire the French had the you French and British both it. had bases? <laughs> um, 
on like the coast. This is in the 1750s. Uh-huh. During the Seven Years' War, the British will remove the French. And then the East India Company will make invoice essentially. Essentially, they conquer it without firing a shot. They, uh, they corporatize they it? They corporatize it and, and employ all of India. Okay. When it got so big that they couldn't manage it anymore, the British government stepped in. They bring the army. They bring the troops. And now it's... It was like it's a, a colony. It was they subtly. Yeah. There was and no they, like we're coming in and taking over. No, is there, there's no like big battle where you yeah. know now India is British. No, it's it's a long term, uh, you know, little by little, economically dominated. Okay. That being said, a lot of uh, the governance, the Raj, <coughs> was done by British. Uh, I'm sorry, Indian princes and stuff. You know, you you empower yeah. the elites to dominate, and they're like, oh, this is your great. Behalf. Yeah. And that's what happens, and uh, it's kind of and then their sons and then their sons end up being like, "I'm going to destroy this." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Gandhi fasts again. Shocking. So Ooh, I want to talk. Coming. I want to. Well, all right. So they're getting ready to split. Right? They've made the decision mm-hmm. where uh, Pakistan, Pakistan is going to be Muslims. Muslim. Yeah. The rest of India is going to be Hindu. So it's two independent nations. Yes. Now, Gandhi is upset about this. This isn't what he wanted. Uh, he's not upset about the split. Like he, he, Yeah, no, he didn't want the split. He wanted, no, he wanted to keep everyone together. He did, but I don't. I think the upset, the upsetting part was the fact that people are killing each other over it. Well, yes. that adds you know, to it. Yeah. But well, here's what happens. So there's a Muslim majority in the Northeast, yes. right? There's also a Muslim majority in the Northwest. Yeah. The Northwest is, the Northwest is not going to be part of Pakistan. So the in, the new India tells these people if you want to leave and go to Pakistan now is your you time. Can. Yeah. So they have to march across the country. And Pakistan tells Indians there same thing. Okay, but, but Pakistan in the movie this is how it's Pakistan presented. I, was yes, and a I, lot more I think Muslim. that is what happened. However, I went okay. down a brutal Indian nationalist YouTube rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> Modern Indian nationalists. Modern Indian nationalists who make Pakistan hate videos. Okay. Wow. Okay. Those are those are not taken down either, huh? No. Wow. Um, there is a <laughs> vocal, crazy ass Indian community that go nuts, and if they see this video, they're going to yell at us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so look, we don't know. We don't know. We're, we're out of the loop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I watched this guy on YouTube talk about all these atrocities that happen because the Pakistan, the new Pakistan would not let the Hindus leave. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. They made them leave. They forced them out. They didn't them give out. them the opportunity to leave. They forced them out. Okay. And there's massacres and rapings and beheadings and all kinds of horrible things that happen. Um, now, is this true or is this just what this guy is saying? This is what I saw in the video. There's probably a bit of truth Some to truth. it. Some truth. Um... There's definitely massacres that happen all over the place. This, you know, you're forcibly removing people. People are relocating. It never goes well. It never goes well. And and I think a, a lot of people died, like over a million. Um, <laughs> you're just citing so many big numbers I today. Know. And yeah, I've gotten some of them right and I've gotten some of them wrong. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I might have wrote this down. Well... During this in the movie, you see like these little groups popping up around the city and they all hate each other. And it's like, all right, Don't worry, we're hold on. We got numbers. We got numbers. It's, it's not happening. Anthony, yeah. you nailed it. Yes. <laughs> Civilian casualty. Partition of India. The excess mortality during the period of the partition is usually estimated to be around 1 million. Sometimes after the show, I feel like the need to dump holy water all over my body. <laughs> I just feel like well, we, we talk about like dark shit sometimes. Yeah. But Gandhi obviously is not a fan of any of this. No. He's fasting. So, so he if you guys don't stop killing each other, I'm just going to kill myself. Cool, now, can we I'm talk? Kill myself so now, can we talk about that. this final fast? Yeah. In yeah. the movie, it's presented as a prolonged period. It's five days. In reality, it was one day. It was one day? One day. One day. That's all it took. It was one day of and Gandhi fasting to end this. Are you sure? Which I know is fucking nuts. And he's all like nuts. cross-eyed and stuff in the movie and sweat. I have five days written down. Really? I have one day. Hold on. Let me Let's check. Find the midpoint. Tell me it's three days. Tell me it's three and um, a half days. Two and a half days would be would be good, too. Okay. After partition, Calcutta was ripped apart by Hindu-Muslim violence. Gandhi announced he would fast until it stopped. It did in little more than a day. 
In real life, this fast was one of the most stunning demonstrations of the moral power for which he was justly famous. As Lord Montaban, then Governor Montaban. General of India, wrote to him, In the Punjab, we have 55,000 soldiers and large-scale riding on our hands. In Bengal, our forces consist of one man, and there is no riding. That surely is a great soul in action. That is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. That is absolutely insane. Well, they that that said that the... the and this comes from fasting. an Indian website. Wow. So. They, that's that's kind of weird. That's worded weird because it said his fasting stopped the violence in a day, but that didn't say he fasted for a day. It said oh, that that's true. in Calcutta, specifically in Calcutta, there, yeah. Calcutta was ripped yeah. apart by Hindu Muslim violence. Calcutta is a city. Gandhi yeah. announced he said he, he wanted would, it to stop everywhere. Gandhi so. announced he would fast until it stopped. Mm -hmm. It did in little more than a day. Right, but that doesn't mean he stopped right. fasting. It, I don't know. In re they're saying in real yeah, life. That's either what we way, got. It's, that's what we way, got. It's not a long time. Do your own research. Yeah. A few days, if that. <laughs> Which is still yeah. a, a long time. You could die not eating. And he's like 78 years he's old. He's old. He's 78 years old. Oh, yeah. You could see it, it took a, a beating on his body. Mm -hmm. In the movie, I don't know about right. real life, but... That's that's wild. Um, that's this is kind of where the movie wraps up. We get to the end, which is the beginning. Well, there's a really yes. powerful scene with the guys like I killed a. a oh, kid. that scene. Oh, yeah. I killed a Muslim kid because they killed, and he's like, I know a way out of hell. You know, adopt a Muslim kid. Adopt a Muslim kid and raise him as a Muslim. Raise him yep. as a Muslim, and the guy's just like breaks what? down, like crying, mm -hmm. like how how good of a person like, can that's you need to the say penance. That? Yeah. That's how you make this right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a way out of hell, um, also in the modern times. You know. Just subscribe to an e-girls only fan, you know, and <laughs> that's the way to do it. It's the way out of hell. It's the way out of hell because you're giving. You're giving back to. Someone. Did you see real quick while we're talking about e-girls? Did you see the um, AI girls that people are yes. making? You see their fingers. When oh, you zoom man. in, <laughs> it's not perfect yet, but like you look and you're like, "Holy shit, that's a hot chick!" And then you're like, "Whoa." Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> their torsos turned around. <laughs> girls aside, a lot of this AI art coming out is pretty spectacular um, and illegal. And I don't understand it, and it frightens me. Um, it's not for me. It's scary. Scary. It is scary. It's yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I don't like it. You no know what's way. weird about it is uh, because it's referencing real pictures, like they're taking pieces of real pictures. Mm -hmm. You kind of lose the uncanny valley feeling a little bit. Usually, you right. have it a lot stronger. Yeah. Where this is like there's gonna be abs this is gonna be used for absolute evil at some point in the near future. It's gonna be used for propaganda, absolute yep. evil. Yep. But it's also gonna be used to completely replace actors for movies. Well, deep fakes do that already, right? But it's gonna go beyond that where you don't even need to do a deep fake because mm -hmm. you could just sit at a computer. Oh, and just do it yourself. Yeah. Do it yourself. Yeah. You can have the AI write you a script, put the script through, and say, "I want it to look kind of like Margot Robbie." And it just does it. And it does it. Wow. Yeah, wow. Probably. That's the yeah, where that that's that's the. And now they can make birds yeah. of prey too. Yes, <laughs> Snyder cut. No one has been this happy since Ant found out a million people died in the partition five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, real quick, the guy who kills Gandhi, the guy who yes. shoots him, yeah. he is a Hindu, believe it or not. Yes, a right wing a Hindu yes. nationalist. He supposedly. was angry about Gandhi's. Um, being too lenient on the Muslims. He wanted war and devastation. He was evil. And he was like, time to get shot, Gandhi. No good so deed goes So even unpunished. like, Gandhi took them so far. Yeah. Did all this. Yeah. Yep. And it still was enough. It'd be like, imagine Washington, like after like he wins the American Revolution, mm -hmm. he's president, like he set this president, a guy's just like, fucking jerk off. <laughs> This is for the. This is. You should have went to London and burned down the city. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it's like. That's what it's like. It's kind of like counter to what he said. It's like evil always loses. You know, good always wins. And it's just you just have get a fair shot. Duncan. Good will overcome. Shot. Yeah, you get shot by the people you helped. Like it. Ugh. Violence works. I just quoted Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I'm very happy I did. Good. <laughs> I think he's a gay bird. <laughs> Perhaps he thinks he's a game bird. <laughs> and that's the movie. He gets he uh, he gets shot. He dies. And that's the life of him. He what? How old was he when he died? Seventy eight. He was up there. He, he was old. He didn't have that many years left. I would assume. Yeah. The but. guy really just could have waited. And father Time would have taken care of it. Yeah. It would have. It wouldn't have been long. <laughs> it would have been long. <laughs> Father Tom. Come on, assassin. Just be patient. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing you learn about Gandhi's teachings. You gotta be patient. 
You could have used it, but that's the movie. That's it, that's guys. So, uh, what do you think? The drawing? All right, let's look at the drawing before I get that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the drawing? That's Gandhi. Um, it looks just like him. That could be a professional <laughs> portrait. That's what I'm going to say. I think so. Uh, so, you could clearly tell he has glasses. <laughs> It's like if E.T. was starring as Gandhi, it's a right? a mushroom cloud with a face. <laughs> and some glasses. This is embarrassing. Well, 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 I'm going to see it. You yeah. have to go close. So, so I'll put it on the screen, but that's like, <laughs> it looks so familiar. Because you know what? I can't tell if that's a mustache or a mouth. I think it's a mustache, right? Uh, no, I think it's a mouth. It's E.T. It looks like E.T. <laughs> e. e. Gandhi starring E.T. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> What's that song you like about E.T.? Oh, Neil Diamond, Heartlight. <laughs> it's a song about E.T.? Yeah. So Neil oh, Diamond no. <laughs> watched E.T. Was like, this is amazing. Made the projectionist, I guess, as private theater run the movie again was like, I love this, and decided to write a touching love song about E.T. called Heartlight. Is it, and it's a good song. He's in love with E.T. in the song? It's it's just about, like, the emotion of E.T. Is it like a fan fiction if he was in love with E.T.? No, it's oh. just about E.T. Like, about e. turn on your heart light yeah. in the yeah. spirit of a young boy's dream. A Don't wake me up too soon. We're gonna take a ride across the moon. This is perverted. You and me. <laughs> this is Brian's classic Neil Diamond impression. He's done many times. Yes. It was good. It was good. <laughs> first one on the show, I think. Yes. Yes, yes. First so one. I'll tell you a little anecdote real quick about Neil Diamond before we get out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, about this song. Yeah. Uh, when me and my now wife, when we first started dating, I decided that I would tell people that she has demanded that this is our song. <laughs> Heartlight, e. song? Heartlight, the ET song. So you like you meet a, some people and you go, yeah, she's a little loves the song. She loves Heartlight. I'd be like, she loves Heartlight, and like my roommate because our rooms were next to each other, so we'd be like, she didn't love Heartlight. She had never heard it. This is Brian and Sandy. And I just decided to project <laughs> oh, onto oh my God, her. I remember. This. Why did you do this? So hold no, on, went wait. Further than that, I know it goes further. <laughs> It's just, I fucking, I'm crazy, I guess. I don't know. Did you find this, did you think this was endearing? I found this hysterical. Like, I was just amusing myself. Okay. So I would play Heartlight, like, in our bed, in my bedroom, and my roommate would hear it, and I would just be like, yeah, she keeps saying it's our song. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, shit like that. Was she with you in the room? Yeah. So the two of you are sitting listening to Heartlight. Yeah. And you're like... This is our song, but you say she she, loves it. it was her idea. It was her idea. Like she turned to <laughs> me. This is a lie. Yeah, she. I'd be, I, would, I would lie and say she turned to me and said, "This is our song, E. T. <laughs> Young boy's dream." Yes. So then, <laughs> so then to take it a step further, when I told my mother, like I, you know, I was in a serious relationship and stuff, and I told my sister, I was like, "Yeah, but there's something I gotta let you guys know about her." She's obsessed with E.T. <laughs> and they're like... Tell us to your family. What do you mean? I, this is why I tell my family. <laughs> I'm like, so she has watched the movie once a week, every week, since she is six years old. At the time, <laughs> she's like 27 when we've met. <laughs> so that means that she had seen E.T. like a thousand of times. times. Yeah. <laughs> Like, more times than anyone should ever watch E.T. <laughs> I said that... It's over a thousand times. <laughs> I said that when we leave each other, she makes me touch my fingertips to hers. <laughs> she loves Reese's Pieces. It's her favorite. Why are you telling them this? I'm just... Did I, you, want, you wanted your mother to think that your new girlfriend was insane. <laughs> yes. I didn't really want them to know too much of my business, and I was like, this is funny to me. <laughs> And I would tell my I would tell my wife that I'm telling them all this about her. <laughs> and 
And like that, I'm like, how I'm, is she taking it? She's like, you can't be doing this. I'm like, this is me. <laughs> like, this is what I do. I do shit like this. You know this. what you bought? Yeah. Like, you have to know what you're getting into if we're going to go beyond this. Like, I'm going to make up crazy lies for no reason <laughs> other than to amuse myself. I'm like, she eats Reese's Pieces all the time. She wears an ET onesie. <laughs> Sometimes she'll like ask if she can call me Elliot. As a red bike. <laughs> You're Elliot. I'm Elliot, yeah. A red bike. She wants to be referred it. to as E.T. <laughs> She's E.T. <laughs> and this is what I'm telling your mother and sister. My mother and sister. Yeah. So eventually, like And what was their reaction? They're like, they're not really voicing anything, but I could see they're like what the fuck is wrong with him? Like, why is he doing this? He's insane. With, meaning, why is he with this girl? Yes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so one night, me and me and my wife, we she hadn't seen ET in years, right? Mm -hmm. And I've never seen it. You've never seen it. Never seen. It's it. actually great. Mm -hmm. But I buy ET, and I was like, let's watch ET, and I put it on. And I film her like watching it. I'm like, it's enough. And I tell them that I've had to watch this every Saturday. So I send it to my mother and sister. I'm like, another day another, watching ET. Another Saturday, gotta watch ET. <laughs> she said, I love this. <laughs> so she's not playing along with you. No. Why wouldn't she go like when she met your parent, your mother? Why didn't she just like, I don't like ET. I don't know why I well, told you this. How does she know if I'm really doing this? Or if you're just fucking with her. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. You know? Why are you torturing the people you love? It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, we get to, like, the first time they're going to meet, and we go to, like, a Dave and Buster's, mm -hmm. and we sit down and we're eating. And this is my one regret about how it played out, because what I should have done, in hindsight, I should have told my family that... My wife puts Reese's Pieces on all her food, and I should have told Alessandra oh my that God. my family puts Reese's Pieces on all our food, and I should have played them against each other. That they don't comment on And it. I should have told my mom like, and sister to make her comfortable, let's just put some on our mashed potatoes, like, and tried to get them both to do it. <laughs> so they Never do it. No. I think I might have been able to get it done no. if I was like, this is so important to me. No. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's my one regret about. But eventually at the dinner, like we're talking and like E.T. comes up and like, oh, I hear you like E.T. And she's like, I like E.T. It's OK, but like I'm not obsessed with E.T. like Brian says. And my mother and sister's jaw dropped. Like he's been telling us all this crazy E.T. shit for months. That's great. That's yeah. really funny. <laughs> For no one except you. Yeah, it's just just to amuse myself. I did kind of think our wedding song should be Heartlight. Heartlight. Yeah. That would have been funny. That would have been, that would have been too <laughs> funny. <much. laughs> Young boy's dream. <laughs> you get into ET. <laughs> so listeners, if you're out there, go out, listen to Heartlight by Neil Diamond. It's a great tune. What did you think of the film? <laughs> ET, I fucking love it. <laughs> out of ten. One out of ten for ET. E.T.? Is it 10 for you? Legit is probably a 9 or 10. Wow. It's up there. That's it's insane. great. There. Gandhi, on the other hand, <laughs> probably... A I never need to watch it again. I'll probably a 3 or 6. 3 a or 6? Three three That's or a six. Big what? jump to well, uh, So 3 stars oh, or 3 out of 5 or 6 out of Oh, show. okay, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I, six. I, uh, You gave a 6. I uh, know. That's what he gave it. Um, yeah. I actually think that's the correct opinion. It is a six. I agree. I did a 6.5. 666, Metal Gandhi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I should put mine to be a six instead of 6.5. Then that would that would have worked better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so heavy, only the devil could lift. <laughs> <laughs> so heavy, I'm going to sit here as we get fucking massacred. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys want to say bye? Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, for stopping by. Anthony, what should the reviewers do? Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you for watching. Um, this is a great So much day. energy. Um, yeah. I think you should like, you should subscribe, yeah. uh, you ring the bell. There's a bell. Ring it. Ring it. Um, 
you smash it. You smash the like button, like smash, smash subscribe burger. button. All those buttons got to get pressed. Smash burger. This is great. It's great for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You turned into from SNL the uh, woman who like talked about sweaty balls. Oh yeah, Molly yeah. Shannon and Anna Gasteyer. Really That's small, who you yeah. became there. Really Pete sweaty. Um, yeah. uh, well, I'm going to prison. I shot a woman in the face. <laughs> I shot a woman while on a film set. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed She's SNL? Dead. SNL hasn't poked fun at that. No, no, no they haven't. Yeah, <laughs> All right. happened to any one of them. That's why. <laughs> all right, so. Want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for listening and or watching. I want to give a big thank you to tell them, Steve, Dave, Walt, and Gary. Thank you, India. <laughs> yes, thank you, India, as well. <laughs> thank you, Providence. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, follow the show on all social media, Our View History Pod on Twitter. Uh, give us a five-star review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. It helps potential subscribe uh, potential sponsors find the show. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow me personally on all social media, at Brian Rupert. Follow me on Letterboxd. I rank or review every single movie I watch, even the ones in my personal life. Thank you all for listening. Our website. We will see you next time. Go to our website, <laughs> reviewinghistorypod.com. Uh, there probably is merch up there. Thanks, guys. We will see you next time. Bye.